Hi everyone. Uh, good evening. Am I audible now? Yes. Audible. Okay. okay. So before we going to start the ESX host networking, today we are in the session four. Uh, today session standard we switch and lab. Uh, before we going to start, uh, if you have any questions on our previous uh, discussion points, let me know. If no questions, uh, we'll start with. We switch. OK, in our ESXi host networking, standard vSwitch which is the one of the main core concept. Uh, it will help you to manage all your ESXi host physical networking as well as virtual networking. OK, and we'll observe the today's agenda. Today's agenda is ESXi networking concepts, vSphere standard switch. In short form, we call it as VSS or we can say vSwitch. And we are also going to discuss vSwitch port groups and ESXi networking maximums and vSwitch use cases. What is the main use case for the virtual switch and ESXi networking architecture and type of virtual switches. And finally, we'll do the ESXi networking lab. OK, so let's start with the ESXi networking concepts first. OK, in our ESXi networking also still we required a physical switch. So physical switch means a physical network switch is a hardware device used to connect the devices and enable communication across the network. Suppose in our network we have a single ESXi host. Single ESXi host also if you want to access remotely we need a one network device which is called a switch. Suppose in our office network instead of one ESX server we have a 50 ESX boxes. In order to communicate between all these 50 ESX boxes we need a one physical switch. Suppose if you do not have any physical switch if you observe the right side diagram without a switch we have a sample. Uh, let's take example of four systems. We have system one, system two, system three and system four and every system have a one interface and one network interface called NIC. So for easy understanding I just give a um, draw the diagram network interface called outside but normally every laptop desktops have a LAN connection port the port name called RJ45 port. This LAN card port connect. Uh, we have only one port by default. From using this one port, at a time we can connect to one system only. Either you can connect to system one to system two, or you can use another cable connect from system one to system three, or you can connect system one to system four. But if I want to access from system one to at a time all the multiple devices within our network, there is no direct option using a single cable. So the only purpose uh, if we do not have a switch, it's very challenging to access our entire network systems. So the solution to avoid this situation is uh, the solution is we have to use a network device. Suppose in between the four system, if you have a four port switch, you can connect all the systems to switch. So using switch, you can communicate from system one to system two. Similarly, you can communicate to the other systems. Well, for our easy understanding, I just uh, capture from the Google uh, one of the uh, Cisco switch diagram. This is a switch uh, Cisco switch 48 port switch. If you observe here, there are multiple ports. Even if you see here, there is a up triangle and also down triangle. The up triangle refers as one, two, three until we have the ports until the 24 ports and the down triangle is ends at a 48. That means this down triangle refers to the 48th port. OK, and there are some management port and console ports also in the right side. OK, this is a how it looks like the switch. This is a 48 port switch. Suppose in our environment we have a 100 systems. All my 100 systems I want to access within the network. If we system count is increased means our switches is no, uh, our switches also we have to increase. For 100 system if you want to buy a 48 switch uh, 48 port switch we need to buy at least minimum we need to buy two switches. Two switches also it won't cover the 100 system. So we need to buy minimally two 48 port switch and one small switch. Uh, one small switch means either eight port switch or 16 port switch. This is how we can procure the network devices. Based on our network infrastructure size, we can uh, purchase the network devices as well. Not only ESX host, we should also consider the networking. So 
seems someone logging in. Okay, so the 48 port switch means based on our network infrastructure size, we can choose the multiple switches. Suppose my network infrastructure is keep on growing. My 100 system, it increased to 200 systems. 200 systems means even uh, to establish your, uh, expand your network infrastructure for the, all the 200 systems, our existing three switches are not enough. We need to again procure a additional three switches. Okay, that's how we can manage our network switches in the physical network. Let's observe the some more detail on the physical switch. So a physical Ethernet switch manages the network traffic between machines on the physical network. For example, in this diagram, all the switch, all four systems are connected to four NIC cards. We connected all the cables to the one physical switch. So physical Ethernet switch manages network traffic between the machines. Between the machines means all our workstations. Machines on the physical network. A switch has a multiple ports, each of which can be connected to a single machine. So it has a multiple port, each port only connected to single machine. We cannot connect multiple ports on uh, multiple systems on a single port. Only one port for one system. OK, and Either you can connect for a single machine or you can connect to another switch on your network. Suppose, for example, I have a, another switch. Even this switch also, I want to connect to all the same network systems. You can utilize one port to connect to this switch also. So this orange color is represent as a, either we can use one port for one single machine or another switch on the network. Each port can be configured to behave in a certain ways, depending on the needs of the machine connected to it. Like suppose, for example, switch one, I am planning to use for a workstation. That is my actual need. And the second switch, I am planning to use for a server's connectivity. Even the servers, if you want to access from the client system to server means, these two switches have a connectivity. Even from the client also, you can directly access your server network. Okay. So that's how we can use the switches and switches are the core of your physical network. Multiple switches can be connected together to form a larger network. See when your network is going growing, growing means we need to need a multiple switches. Just to form a large networks. OK. Now. Uh, there is a common word physical network, virtual network. Generally, what a physical network means, let's understand what is the meaning of physical network. A network of physical machine that are connected so that they can send data to and receive data from each other. VMware ESXA runs on a physical machine. Even for our VMware ESXA also, we need a still we need a physical switches. All our ESXA hosts where it is running means it's running between both physical network and virtual network. And virtual network means a network of virtual machine running on a physical machine that are connected logically to each other so that they can send data and receive data from each other. Virtual machine can be connected to the virtual network that we create when we add a network. Even uh, in the right side diagram, if you notice, we have a four virtual machines, VM1, VM2, VM3 and VM4. While creation of virtual machine itself, we observed that every virtual machine have a virtual components, vCPU, vMemory, virtual disk and vNIC card. vNIC means virtual machine network interface card. So for easy understanding, I just draw the network card outside. So even the virtual machine also have a network interface card while creation of VM itself will get a one network card. All these virtual machines also same like our physical machine in order to communicate all our physical server or workstation, we need a physical switch. Similarly, if you want to communicate between your virtual machines, we need a virtual switch. So just for logical diagram, I just mentioned this switch as a virtual switch. So virtual switch is nothing but yeah, it's a software generated switch. Which software we used is ESXi software. Using ESXi server, when we install the ESXi server, by default, it will create a one virtual switch. Okay, it is a, almost the switch is nothing but yeah, it's a just a logical switch. It's almost behave like a physical switch. But physical switch, it's just to communicate between the physical workstation, watch 
virtual switch mainly to communicate between all the virtual machines. Even same like physical, when our network is growing, we are adding additional switches. Even our virtual switches also, one switch is completed, we'll grow for a, another virtual switch. If you need a multiple requirements, let's say my all my workstations connected to one virtual switch, all my production servers, and my all my test VMs connected to the another switch, then you can, based on your requirement, not only one switch, uh, we can not only limit for a one switch, we can create a multiple virtual switches within a ESX box. Okay. Now we'll observe the how the virtual switches looks like. VSPS standard switch, VSS, or we can say virtual switch. If you see the right side diagram, this gray color icon refers as a virtual switch. Okay. And this virtual switch, how it is connected is again the virtual switch is connected to ESX physical adapter. Physical adapter is nothing but a physical NIC card, Ethernet card, any name we can use. But in the ESX level, the physical adapter naming convention also change it to VM NIC 1. Okay, this is the ESX server physical adapter. But this physical adapter connected in a virtual switch. But this line, if you see the physical line, it's again shared to the all your virtual machine networks. Okay, and even if you observe this diagram, there is a one icon, circle icon. This is nothing but a port to group icon. And the next slide, I explain you the what is port to group. Okay. But if you observe the names in this virtual switch, we have a port to group, production port to group, test to port group, management port group, vMotion port group. Within a one virtual switch, they grouped the multiple ports to one port group. Even in our physical networks also, when we have a 48 network switch, let's say here we have a 48 network switch. If you observe here, the 16 ports you can make as a one network. And another 16 ports you can configure for a different group. Like uh, first 16 ports you can dedicate it for a test team. Another test port groups you can dedicate for a development team. Another 16 ports you can dedicate for a production team. So based on our requirement, we can group our multiple ports to one network team. Uh, one our office environment teams. Our uh, we can also say uh, BU team, business as usual, or uh, business unit teams. So based on your business units, like uh, normally the most of the companies, they have a standard names like a HR department, sales department, testing department. Testing, we can also say QA department. And there is a separate team for a development Development team means all the developers works in the development team and also there is a production team who develops the product product and also the project management team. There will be a plenty of teams. If you want to divide all your networks among your team members, even in the network level also, you can dedicate a few ports for HR team, few ports dedicate for your development team, few ports for your production team. Similarly, in our virtual switch also, if you just verify on the ESX level also within our virtual switch the, if you see there will be two port groups one is virtual machine network port group pg means port group and second one vm kernel port group vm kernel means we already discussed in our second session ESX host main core component is vm kernel vm kernel is the ESX host core operating system so to manage our ESX server, we need a VM kernel port group. To manage our virtual machines, we need a one port group, VM network port group. But it's not, uh, this is the two types available only in the virtual switch. Virtual machine port group, you can create multiple port groups. See, if you see here, we can see virtual machines are two virtual machines running, Ubuntu 10, Ubuntu 20. And this two virtual machine comes under the production port group and there is a VLAN ID 100. This VLAN means it's a creation of multiple, uh, if you're grouping a multiple ports is port group. That group in physical layer, we call it as a virtual LAN. This virtual LAN is like a logically we can configure among the ports, group the few ports, you can make it as one LAN. Uh, one virtual LAN. Suppose this number VLAN 100 is, it's up to our networking team, networking team uh, configuration. There is no specific number we can configure based on our convenience. Like uh, here example, VLAN 100. This VLAN 100 specifically for a production team. All the production VMs comes under the production port group. And if you observe the second port group, it's a test port group. All the test VMs comes under the test port group. This test port group VLAN is virtual LAN ID is 200. It's a 200 is it's like a logical number. Randomly, we can pick any number. 
okay and the third port group is management port group this virtual lan id is 10 and the virtual lan this uh, management means it's mainly to access our esxi host to access the esxi host our main port group is vm kernel so there is a vm kernel ports available under the management port group and the, also the another port group which is called vmotion vmotion means uh, virtual machine migration this vmotion concept we can discuss in detail when we are talking about when we installing the vcenter server after uh, once we install the vcenter server i will show you the feature of vmotion but in this session just to understand that there is a one management classification that is vmotion this vmotion also comes under the vm kernel port group okay but here no vlan id so it's a just to represent that and vlan id is, is only the optional only either you can enter the specific vlan id or you know need you just leave it as a blank but if you need a production servers in our physical network if it is connected to 100 vlan the same number we need to enter here suppose our vmotion network if there is no vlan on the physical switch even here also you leave it as a blank okay the same points uh, just given a uh, high level overview here vsps switches it works much like a physical switch and v switch creates a link between physical NICs and virtual NICs. so this second point if you notice i repeat v switch create a v switch means the middle one the complete gray color virtual switch so this virtual switch create a link between physical NICs. physical NICs means physical adapter vm NIC one and virtual NICs. see every virtual machine have a virtual NICs. even if you see here there is a green light this all these vms connected to virtual switch and again virtual switch connected to physical adapter this is how the communication will establish and the third point virtual switches provide the connectivity between virtual machines on the same host or different host even if you want to communicate between the within the virtual switch vm you can communicate even if you see the line from the green color there is a line to communicate here and as well as you can communicate other management also so within your host we can communicate even if you want to communicate virtual machine from this host to another host the only communication process is from the ubuntu 10 ubuntu 20 connect to the virtual machine nick first from the nick it will connect to v switch from the v switch it will go to the physical adapter from physical adapter after it will connect to the physical switch from physical switch again it will connect to the another esxi host okay so that point we mentioned here virtual switches provides a connectivity between virtual machines on the same host or on a different host okay and even even though a virtual standard switch works much like a physical switch it doesn't have some of the advanced functionality of a physical switch okay this is also important point vSphere virtual switch is like a logical switch only some of the key features whatever the features advanced functionality features in physical switch that is not available on a virtual switch i just given two examples vlan creation vlan means virtual lan creation this is also logically we can configure the virtual lan on a physical switch layer how we create the vlan means in our virtual physical switch if you have a 100 port switch or 64 port switch based on your port numbers within that 64 ports or 100 ports you want to make it into your four groups 25 ports into one team 25 ports into another team access so when we want to group the multiple ports on a physical switch layer the logical grouping of multiple network is nothing but a virtual lan so virtual lan depends on your switch available ports we can create a multiple virtual lan so this concept virtual lan creation concept is not available on a our v switch level our v switch level we can just enter only the vlan numbers this vlan number whatever the vlan number configured on our physical network the same physical vlan numbers we can enter on a virtual level also okay this is a vlan creation example and let's observe the another example a virtual switch cannot connect directly to another virtual switch let's say within our esx box this is the first virtual switch if i create a another virtual switch but virtual switch to a virtual switch there is no direct connection 
okay this is also it's a one of the limitation in the virtual switch but when comes to physical switches if you observe our first diagram our physical switch even if i want to connect from one physical switch to another physical switch you can take one physical lan cable lan cable means either cat5 or cat6 cables or high configuration cable connect the cable from one port from the switch one and another end you can connect to your second switch so that's how we can communicate in the physical level but in when comes to the virtual level there is no option for a virtual switch cannot connect directly to another virtual switch even if you want to connect from one virtual switch to another virtual switch how it will connect is again from the switch one uh, from the switch one it will go to the physical adapter from physical adapter it will connect to your physical switch from physical switch again it comes to the second virtual switch that's how it will communicate clear so this is the virtual switch concept so today we are going to observe how to create the virtual switch how to create the port groups okay now next point is virtual switch port groups so as we discuss in our virtual switch we have a two types of port groups vm network port group and vm kernel the same port groups two port groups i just mentioned elaborated here so vm port group means another name virtual machine port group to manage virtual machine network even in our uh, our demo system esxi demo system also when we install the esx server we haven't created these two port groups manually by default vmware esx server when we install it will create one virtual switch on top of the virtual switch default it will create a two port groups this is the icon for port group w one port group it is dedicated for virtual machine network and another port group dedicated for management network now let's observe what is the use of vm network and management network when we observe virtual machine port group the name itself it says virtual machine so this port group mainly for to manage virtual machines network here i mentioned virtual machines not for a single machine multiple machines we can use the same port group okay and vm kernel port group vm kernel port group also there is a multiple benefits of vm kernel port group uh, the this is mainly for ip storage vsphere v motion fault tolerance these two features also i covered in the v center servers class because these two are the virtual center features these two features not available on a single esx host but until now we are discussing the single esx installation how to install a esx server we already done the single esx host installation lab and then we we started discussing the esx networking as part of networking we discussed the basic networking devices ip addressing and now today's session we are directly jump on to the vmware virtual switch vmware virtual switch or we say vmware vsps standard switch vss in short form v switch so within the v switch we have a two types of port group vm port group for virtual machine network and vm kernel port group for there is a multiple features available for vm kernel one is for storage access and also the v motion feature fault tolerance feature and vsan vsan means virtual san san means storage area network and provisioning and so on these all the features uh, v center features i will cover in the v center server class just understand the purpose of vm kernel in this session and also the another key point for vm kernel port group is for the esxi management network even we are accessing the esx host in our lab system we are accessing 192.168.10.71 ip address that ip address also refers to as a vm kernel port group ip address only okay within the vm kernel port group there is a one of the vmk ip vm kernel adapter ip that adapter ip is 71 okay and now let's observe our below diagram this below diagram if you see the blue color icon this is the virtual switch this virtual switch in the logically i mentioned as a four physical nics it's connected to the four physical nics in our esx terminology physical nics we also call it as uplink ports okay you don't confuse uplink ports is nothing but a physical adapter or physical nics okay virtual switch is connected to physical uh, physical adapters which is uplink ports and also within the virtual switch we have a two port groups virtual machine port group vm kernel port group and even this port group also not limited to one port group we can add a multiple port groups also so just to understand in within the virtual machine port group i divided into three categories one is for a production 
and one is for a test and development and another one for a DMC. And again, VM kernel port group also we divided in, we created a two VM kernel port groups, one for a management and one for a vSphere vMotion. I give an example of one feature vMotion. Similarly, if you want to create another VM kernel port group for fault tolerance, yes, we can create another port group. Okay, and this is about the virtual switch. How many types of port groups we have? So hope you, you got an idea on what is virtual switch and how many types of port groups. So this is one of the important interview question. Uh, in, in the interviews, they will ask what is a vSwitch port groups or they may ask how many types of vSwitch connections uh, or vSwitch connection types. Anyway, they can ask vSwitch connection types or port groups both are same. So we have a two types of connections. One is virtual machine port group. Another one is VM kernel port group. OK, now we are going to observe what is the ESXi host networking maximums? How many virtual switches we can create on within a single host? OK, this is also we, we need to learn. This information I collected from the VMware configuration maximum guide. Even in the Google, you can just type VMware configuration maximum. You will find a PDF from that PDF. I just collected this information. ESXi networking virtual network switch creation ports per standard switch. Even if you create one standard switch per standard switch configuration maximum maximum ports, we can create 4000 4088 ports we can create. OK, it's nearly 4000 plus. So. Usually for virtual machine also by default, we can assign a one net, one network card virtual NIC. Not only one network card for a virtual machine, you can add multiple network cards also. So like that, if you add multiple network card, each network card referred as a one port from the virtual switch. So like that, within one virtual switch, standard switch, it supports up to 4000 plus ports. OK, but this number is just re remember this number when you are attending for interviews. But uh, or else just uh, have an idea. Default virtual switch, how many maximum ports means this is a maximum ports. OK, and the total virtual network switch ports per ESX host. Even if you're trying to use the 4088, our ESX level maximum, how many ports we can? It supports is until the 4096 ports it supports per ESX host. And port groups, just now we discussed there, there is a two types of port groups, right? And port groups per standard switch, even per standard switch, if you want to create a multiple port groups, you can create port groups until 512. OK, 500 plus port groups we can create within a switch. OK, so if you observe here within our virtual switch, how many port groups here I mentioned as a five port groups, one port group for production, one port group for test and dev and another port group for DMZ. DMZ means demilitarized zone. Normally in the real time environment to maintain the isolated network, separate demilitarized zone networks they maintain. It's a not compulsory for every office. It's a depends on the customer requirement, but most common environments in the virtual machines is test and development is usual usual practice and also the production network. When you want to do any changes on the production in the real time scenarios, the best practice is do your test and development first. When your test and development system is working fine, whatever the changes you did on the test and development, same changes you can apply similarly on the production, but it's not recommend advisor to do any change on the production system first before going to production first do your test test system do whatever change you want that once the test is success same way you can apply that change on a production so in that means for virtual machine port group we need to segregate a multiple port group one port group we dedicate for production network one port group for test even if you want to segregate development separately, you can create a separate development port group also. So like this, how many port group we can create means as per the configuration maximum, the maximum port groups we can create until 512 port groups. OK. And even VM kernel port group for easy understanding, I created two port groups, one for vMotion and one for a management. Management means ESXi management network. OK, clear. Is there any questions on this point? If no questions, uh, let's move on to the configuration maximum. 
Okay. So as we discuss, each virtual switch support maximum ports 4088. And each ESXi host, how many networks ports it supports is 4096. And also we spear one virtual switch, how many port groups we can create within one switch is 512 port groups we can create. It supports maximum until the 512 port groups. Okay. And the last point, physical NICs, Either you can use in a multiple speeds, 10 Gbps speed or 20 Gbps or 25 Gbps, whatever the speed it is, based on the speed, suppose I want to use 10 Gbps NICs. Per ESXi host, it supports maximum 16 NICs. Suppose if we go, if we just go back to our previous virtual switch diagram, in this physical virtual switch diagram, right side you can see physical adapter. Here we add a only one net virtual machine NIC. Again, if you observe the port group diagram, in this port group diagram, I added the uplink ports. Physical NICs are four physical NICs. Similarly, how many physical NICs we can add on your each virtual switch or each ESX boxes? Maximum for each ESX host, we can add the physical NIC cords until 16 NIC cords with these speeds. Suppose your speed is more than uh, 25 Gbps, then it, it won't support for 16, it's a maximum eight. OK, those NICs information and also the additional configuration maximum information you can directly find from a VMware configuration maximum guide. We verified in the previous session. Suppose if you want to verify again, just type VMware configuration maximums. In Google, you'll find this information. So you get started to the configuration maximum. Here. Left side, you can see all the VMware products. Suppose our now we want to verify for the vSphere 7. So select vSphere 7 and we are by default it selected vSphere product. There is a multiple categories to verify the maximum. Uh, today we are discussing the ESXi host networking maximum. So I'm just selecting ESXi host maximum. Click on view limits. When we click on view limits, the right side it will display all the information. Virtual machine maximum. ESXi host maximum, ESXi memory, storage maximum, see network maximum. See in the network maximum, if you are using a 1 Gbps Ethernet card, maximum is 32. If you are using a 10 Gb, 20 Gb and also the 25 Gb, you can see maximum up to 16 NIC cards you can use. That is the limit. Okay. And suppose if I want to add more than 25 Gb, 50 GB NIC code I want to add. The maximum 50 GB NICs it supports per ESXi host is only eight NIC codes. Okay. And even 100 GB also it supports, but maximum NICs we can add only four NIC codes. Okay. And the, we discussed another point is switch, uh, switch also, right? So those points also from here. See, VSPS standard and distributed switch. Total network switch ports per host 4096. And also virtual network switch creation per per VSPS standard switch. One switch, how many ports is 4088? And port groups per standard switch is 512. OK, so whatever the information is very important, those information I just collected and updated here. OK. Now. Let's move on to the configuration. We switch use cases. So just now we discussed the how many virtual switches and uh, how many uh, networks we can create it and also the port group maximum. Seems someone is. OK, port group maximum. And also the NICs, how many NIC we can add maximum for each host 16. OK, similarly, we switch use cases also we can observe. Use cases are I just divided into the two use cases. So we'll start discussing the top one first. If you observe the first example, this use case is we have only one virtual switch. Just now we discussed each virtual switch maximum ports are 4088 ports and the physical ports uh, based on our network speed. If your network speed is 25 Gbps network speed, we can add not only four NICs, we can add maximum. How many NICs we can add? 16 NICs we can add. One six. OK, once we add the 16 NIC cards, our virtual switch also supported up to 4088 ports. Within these 4088 ports, you can create multiple port groups. OK, so for our easy understanding, I created a 
five port groups so port group is nothing but a grouping of multiple ports one icon is represented as a one port if you group multiple ports it is one port group okay so i created one port group for management one port group for vmotion and four port groups for a, four ports for a production three ports for a test and dev and one port for a iscsi suppose in my production i have a four virtual machine these ports are already in use you no need to worry about the if you want to create a fifth virtual machine we no need to worry automatically virtual switch increase this ports count okay even the test and dev we have a three machines we have a three ports here in future i created a additional test vm we no need to worry about the additional fourth vm port uh, how the port will be assigned automatically v switch will assign a new port because we have a plenty of ports 4000 plus ports are available in v switch automatically it will assign even if you remove the virtual machine from the test and dev remove means our virtual machine completely removed a virtual machine removed means virtual machine components also removed which is one of the vm network card also removed when you remove the network card the scale down information also it will maintain that portion also v switch will automatically decrease the count either we can increase the virtual machine nix or either you can decrease either way we no need to do any manual steps it will do automatically okay that is also one of the uh, special feature of virtual switch so this is the one use case another use case is instead of creating one virtual switch i divided into a multiple virtual switches so how many virtual switches i created here 1 2 3 4 and 5 so five virtual switches created and each virtual switch i dedicated only for a one port group okay and here how many nics are i am using two nics card but if you see in the first diagram we have a four nic cards but if you observe the second use case how many nics we have we have a two nics for each switch why we are using a two nics for each switch is two nics is mainly for a redundancy purpose okay redundancy means in case of one network card is down we can connect from a another network card so remember that always in the real time scenario every virtual switch not recommended to maintain as a single network card even if you see in this diagram just for our understanding definition understanding purpose i shown as a one nic card but in the real time scenario it's not recommended to maintain a single nic card the reason is when the vm nic one that physical nic card is down unexpectedly down it will impact all your virtual machine networks so to avoid that situation the only recommendation is every virtual switch must maintain recommendation is best practice or recommendation anything you can use best practice for each virtual switch we should maintain two physical nic cards when we have a two physical nic cards on a individual virtual switch in case of one nic card down there will be no impact your specific port group suppose in this diagram we have a five virtual switches first virtual switch for management port group and the second virtual switch for vmotion uh, don't worry about the vmotion in detail concept i will explain in upcoming classes okay and the production means all our production virtual machines this production virtual machine you can create your windows vm linux vm solaris vm whatever vm you want and also the another fourth virtual switch is for test and dev and finally the last virtual switch is dedicated for iscsi and even even though if you create a multiple virtual switches per esxi host how many ports it support it supports maximum 4096 ports so this 4096 i just from the configuration maximum okay the same ports per host either you can create n number of switches but only our limit is 4000 only even if you create one switch within your one switch you create multiple port groups even though our limit is 4000 plus 4088 okay this is the two use cases in you know today's lab we'll observe the two use cases how to create within one switch how to create multiple port groups and uh, how to create a additional v switch and how to create multiple port groups okay these two scenarios we'll observe in our lab but before observing the lab uh, we are going to discuss the esxi networking architecture okay esxi networking architecture also one of the important concept uh, this will give you the complete scenario how our esxi is functional okay just now if you observe this architecture the below one is switch this switch also here i took the example of two switches one switch connected to test vlan another another ports are connected to production vlan and again another switch dedicated for a ip storage and management network okay so <coughs> excuse me 
just a minute. See, if you observe the ne networking architecture diagram, just now we discussed about the physical switches. In our first slide, we, we discussed the, how the one switch is connected to multiple system. Similarly, in our ESX environment also, we need a physical switch to connect to multiple ESX boxes. Instead of laptop and desktop, we are connected in the architecture. We connected to the ESX host. So ESX, uh, one ESX host I'm showing in this diagram. One ESX means each ESX host have a core component, which is VM kernel. And for this ESX box, I connected how many NIC cards? One, two, three, four, five. Five NIC cards connected. But this one single ESX host, if I'm using a 20 GBPS NIC card, how many NICs we can add maximum? 16. 16 NIC cards we can add. Very good. But the, for our easy understanding, I just added a five NIC cards. So five NIC cards also, if you observe the diagram, the first one, two, three NICs connected to switch one and four and five NICs connected to switch two. Why we segregated this is this two NICs dedicated for a management port group. And if you observe the another three NICs, these three NICs are dedicated for a virtual machine port group. Just now we discussed how many types of port groups. We have two types of port groups. So whatever the available NICs we have in the ESX box, I segregated the physical NICs also. How I segregated is we among our five NIC cards, three NICs I dedicated for VM network and two NICs I dedicated for a management network. Okay, management port group. Okay, that's the, the VLAN number 101, 102, 3, 4 and all. It's subjected to be our company network team. Normally, either network team or uh, now most of the time, all the VLANs configuration is taken care by our uh, organization networking team. Networking team, the, their main role is they will maintain the physical network devices. And as a virtualization engineer or VMware systems engineer, our responsibility is we need to maintain the virtual network. Physical network taken care by physical engineer, network engineers and the virtual switches taken care by our VMware engineers for vmware engineers we should have an idea on how to create the virtual switch how to create the port group and how we can add a virtual machine nick cards so virtual machine nick card we already discussed while creation of vm itself by default it will get a one nick card even if you want to add a another nick card also we can add virtually you can increase multiple nick cards and also the port groups also not only four port groups you can create multiple port groups that port groups count also we discussed today within one switch or among the esx host max we can create until 512 ports okay 500 plus ports we can create so but our easy understanding i created here five port groups three, three port groups are dedicated for virtual machine virtual machines traffic and two port groups are, one port group is dedicated for sorry four port groups for virtual machine and one port group for a management network management network means to maintain our esx host also we need a one port group okay so the same point we mentioned here sorry yeah on the physical side vlans can be trunked to the ports which is the which the esx host have assigned vlan ports trunked means the we can group the 103 104 we can group into a one one network that's why i meant i just put the two lines in a single this two network we can also do a trunk trunk is nothing but a we can we can merge the two VLANs so that one port group is supported for both configurations. One for a IP storage, one for a management network. IP storage means nothing but a IP based access to storage. Okay. Suppose we have a remote storage box. You want to access the remote storage box. We can access using this VLAN. Okay. And VLAN number, uh, no need to maintain the same number. We can use any different type of numbers. You can maintain 200, 300, any number you can maintain. This number is like a just logical number. Uh, whatever number you want, you can keep. Okay, and therefore all networks can be presented to virtual machine as appropriate, but maintaining the security required in the enterprise. So to maintain the security only, we are creating a multiple VLANs. One VLAN dedicated for test and one VLAN dedicated for production. Because sometimes there is a scenario a test VM should not communicate it to production. 
So if you want to segregate these two test VMs and production VM, the only segregation method is we can divide it into a two VLANs. So by default, VLAN 101 will not access to VLAN 102. Okay. If you want to communicate between two different network, again, we need a, a router. If you have a router using the router, we can communicate or another option is within the VLAN, we can configure a VLAN can be trunked. Trunked means we are just uh, combining these two VLANs. Okay. You can just have a basic idea, uh, configuration knowledge and all for VMware engineers not required, but we should have an idea on the how the physical network also will work. Okay. Now let's come to the types of virtual switches. Just know we discussed the virtual switch. Now we are going to discuss the types of virtual switch. OK, we have two types of virtual switches. OK, a virtual network supports following types of virtual switches. One is standard switch, which is VSS and another one is DV switch. In short form, we call it as distributed switch or DVS. Any name you can use. OK, even the virtual switch also sometimes we call it as VSS. Don't confuse VSS, V switch, standard switch, anything. The naming convention is same. OK, and virtual switch configuration for only the single host. OK, when it comes to the DV switch, DV switch mainly the name is itself. It says distributed. It's not for a single host. It's for a multiple host management. Even the DV switch concept I will cover when we are in uh, installing when we are uh, discussing the vCenter concepts because in our single host, we do not have an option to do the DV switch, but just uh, have an uh, idea on what is DV switch. Virtual switch configured for an entire data center. So that is the intent that is nothing but a to manage multiple years success hosts. We need a DV switch up to 200 hosts can be attached to the same DV switch. That is the capacity of DV switch maximum 200 hosts. Also, we can connect on a one switch. So suppose in your real time scenario, if I have a 50 years success host for 50 years success host, each host have a one V switch. So we already have learned one V switch. Uh, we can create how many port groups and uh, how many connection types we have we discussed in the real time scenario for 50 SXS host. Will you recommend to prefer to create 50 times 50 virtual switches or will recommend to create one DV switch? Which one you prefer? DV switch. DV switch. So this is also one of the important concept DV switch. Uh, we'll discuss in the for subsequent classes. OK. Uh, consistent configuration across all hosts. But in order to understand the DV switch concept, first we should have an idea on how to configure the standard switch. OK, and also the consistent configuration across all attached host. Consistent configuration means whatever configuration on your single host, the same configuration applicable for all the associated ESX hosts. And host must either enterprise plus license or belong to vSAN cluster. See, this is the condition. If you want to use in our office environment DV switch, we must and should have a enterprise plus license. Suppose in our organization, we do not have a enterprise plus license. Even though we have a 50 SX servers, we do not have enterprise plus license. There is no other option. We have to configure 50 V switches on a individual ESX host. OK, so to, uh, that is the reason we are learning the V switch first. OK, and both switch types are elastic. Elastic means another word is flexible. Ports are created and removed automatically. Yeah, earlier we discussed the ports and addition and removal. We no need to concentrate on virtual ports. It's everything is automatic by virtual switch and DV switch. OK, whenever we create a new VM, the virtual NIC card is assigned. Virtual NIC assigned means each NIC have a one port. Even when you remove the virtual machine, the port removal will be. It's not a manual removal. It's automatically removed by virtual switch. It will take care which port is free, which port is uh, available that all virtual traffic will take care by virtual switch. OK, now it is the time for the ESX networking lab. In our lab, whatever we discuss today, the same concepts will do the lab. First lab will observe the V switch creation and the second one creating a VM port group and the third we can observe the VM kernel port group. Just now we discussed we have a two types of connection type. One connection is VM port group. Second connection is VM kernel port group and remember connection type or port group both are same. Some uh, sometimes we may mention as connection type, but the connection type and port group don't confuse. Both are the same meaning. 
we have a two types of port group vm port group this one will observe how to create vm port group and another one is vm kernel port group but only recommendation is while creation of vm port group it's a just a very quick we right click the uh, we switch and we can create the po add vm network port group we can create but only recommendation for vm network port group is there is no pre requirement to create a vm network port group but when comes to the vm kernel port group we need a one minimum requirement for vm kernel port group is we required a ip address so we need a ip address and vlan id also required if your physical switch configured with vlan number the same vlan number we need to configure at the vm kernel port group so uh, this is also one of the interview question they may ask what is the pre requirements to configure a vm kernel port group the pre requirements are for vm kernel port group we required a minimum one ip address and also the vlan id when we have this two information it's a good to create a vm kernel port group but when comes to virtual machine port group there uh, there is no need of ip address reason is for virtual machine port group it's just a logical network but ip address we are assigning on the virtual machine guest os level if your os is windows we are not assigning on the nic adapter level we are assigning only on the os level only so for that reason for this vm network port group there is no ip addresses we are just assigning ips only on the os level okay and coming to the fourth point fourth point is adding nics or uplinks and this is also one keyword in the our virtualization esxi network card whenever they use uplink word don't confuse uplink is nothing but your physical nic only okay so adding the uplinks to the virtual switch uh, mainly for redundancy purpose so today we discuss virtual switch how many nics we add based on our network speed 20 gbps means we can add a 16 nics so by default esx host while installation we need minimally one nic card while installation of esx server and also the speed minimum speed to install esx server is we need a 1 gbps network speed okay network speed how we can verify we can verify on a network card right click we can see the network speed okay and observe the vswitch connection policies this is also one of the important uh, vswitch default connection policies i will show you what is the policies are available normally most of the time connection policies we we leave it as a default settings but uh, when there is any audit or any of the requirement from the customer if they want to follow some security benchmarks during that scenario only we can configure the connection policy we will modify the connection policies or else most of the scenarios will keep the connection policies as it is no need to do any modifications okay now uh, let's log into our lab system and we'll create the lab one by one okay so uh, we'll see our workstation all the systems are up or not So in our workstation system, our Active Directory system is powered on state. ESX also powered on. Our ESX A1 IP address is 192.168. Sorry. Okay. In our ESX one, uh, the IP address is 192.168.10.71, and let's verify the ESX two IP address. ESX2 IP address is 192.168.10.72. Okay. Suppose uh, while configuring the V switch, first we can log into the one ESX box first. Okay. So just our same lab system. Okay. I type the first IP address 71, and we'll observe the one ESX host first. Once it is completed, we'll do the same uh, lab in the second ESX also. Let me log into the host. Okay, so this is our ESX box. If we when we log into the ESX host, we can see mainly all these options. ESX host, virtual machine information, storage, and networking. But to, today, when we are doing the ESX networking configuration, select the networking. Even the networking icon also almost similar like a port group icon. Okay. When you select the networking, in the right side we have a multiple tabs. So first, 
today we are going to create a virtual switch, right? So select the one virtual switch. Default there is a one default switch. The switch name is vSwitch0. Okay, and also there is a two port groups default assigned and uplink is one uplink is created. And also there is a warning message. This warning message, let's understand the warning message. It says that this virtual switch has no uplink redundancy. So you should add another uplink adapter. Okay, so they clearly says that we need to add a, another uplink adapter. So that means currently we have one uplink. Even in the right side diagram, you can see this is the virtual switch. It has two port group, VM network and management network. As we discussed, for virtual machine network, there is no IP address. IP we should assign only on the voice level. But when it comes to management network, we need to assign the IP address. There is a VM kernel adapter zero. See, we are accessing ESX using the VM kernel IP only. And the, these two NICs are connected to, virtual NICs are connected to our one physical NIC only. Suppose all of the sudden my physical NIC is down. There will be impact for your ESXi host network as well as your virtual machine network. So to avoid this situation, the only recommendation we need to add a another NIC code. So how we can add the NIC code? Generally, if it is a physical server, physically we need to insert a additional NIC code. But in our lab, we are using the ESX also a one of the VM. So we can add a one NIC code now. How we can add the NIC code? Just go to the VM edit settings. Here we can click on add and we have the multiple hardware peripherals. You can just choose the network adapter. OK, click on finish. When we add the network adapter in our first network adapter, it's a default. We configured the switch to VM net zero, so better to choose the same network. OK, VM net zero and click on OK. So NIC code is added sometime the changes will be affected in the voice level. If it is not affected in the voice level, it may require a restart because it's a workstation system. We added. So it's not at come here. How we can verify is select the networking in the right side. We have a port groups tab, virtual switch tab, and also the physical NIC tab. So let's verify the physical NIC tab. We have only one physical NIC card. Still, the new NIC card is not yet identified. So in order to get the, our new uh, adapter, we have we can try rebooting the ESX host. Okay. So before rebooting the ESX host, what is the recommendation? Select the host, right click and place our ESX host into maintenance mode. This is a, even in the real time scenario, whenever we are doing any change on the ESX box, always remember place the host into the maintenance mode. OK, when we select enter maintenance mode, this will be in a. Are you sure you want to put the host in the maintenance mode? Yes. Whatever the VMs running on this VM, all will be migrated to another host. See currently in the host in a maintenance mode, the icon also changed. When the host is in maintenance mode, you can just right click and you can just reboot. This way you can reboot or else uh, I'm, what I'm thinking is we just added only one NIC code, right? Why don't we add additional NICs? We have one NIC code, second NIC code we just added. Let me add some additional NICs also. Finish. Third NIC also added and choose the VM network. And also let's add one more NIC. OK, and another NIC also added. And totally five NICs I'm going to add or six NICs, whatever the until 16 we can add. OK, click on OK. So for our testing purpose, I added five NICs. So you can restart from the, this uh, direct console user interface or you can directly restart from graphical mode. So right click the ESX host. Reboot. Reboot the host reboot. See you can see the screen. The host is rebooting. OK, it may take some time. See the reboot is in progress. If you want to take a quick short break, uh, 10 minutes break you can take and we'll continue the lab.
so now time is 9:37 uh, singapore time uh, india time 7:7 7, 7. okay we'll start at 7:15 okay 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 yeah, yeah. let's take short break yeah.